various shows that I do when they ask me to go down and do measuring or whatever on these shows. You get people coming up to the stand and they come up and they say, oh, he's, the guy's going to ask me, you know, he's, oh, he's, you're Chris and all the rest of it. Yeah, saying, oh, you, you're the guy with the, you're the guy with the dog, aren't you? It was, oh, he brought us Osher, where's the dog? Well, I'm fine, thanks, yeah. Nice <laughs> to meet you. Yeah, I'm Chris, yeah, the dog. Now, I don't bring it to shows because, uh, and then they <laughs> off. <laughs> so I've got a bit of a complex about a dog. Probably favourite rifle actually, um, used right across the whole spectrum and you know I do a lot of management of the larger deer species so what I'll tend to do um, is I'll tend to use this for the smaller deer and I'll tend to use the 6.5 Creedmoor for the for the larger deer species and the other thing that I've done with the Creedmoor eight ten months ago maybe even a bit longer than that is switched over onto non-toxic with it because um, you know I trialled a lot of um, non-toxic ammunition um, and it does shoot well through that particular calibre. I used to use 120 grain in 6.5 anyway and primarily that was Swedish and then switched over laterally to the Creedmoor and that just switches straight over onto non-toxic and I was slightly wary to be honest having read various things about non-toxic how it would perform in the field on, on, on live quarry and I've shot I, I, I don't know how many deer I've shot now with that, with that particular combination and I, I, I use the Cellier and Bella Blue 120 grain which I think just sits through that rifle as sweet as a nut and it's pinpoint accurate. I mean you've seen today when we were out in the field and you're actually often shooting through narrow windows. You've got a lot of tree cover, you might be looking down through a canopy, you're waiting for a row just to come into it, you don't have a lot of time and you just need to have the confidence that that round's going to go through that little window which you demonstrated here this morning. Um, boom, job done. So. Both rifles superb. Um, equally, you could use both rifles on all deer species, mine, and I've shot a lot of red deer with a 243. Um, but if we're talking calibers for personal, personally, if I could only have one rifle, then um, it would probably be the Jaeger 10 in Creedmoor that's sitting in the cupboard and the others that are, that are kind of gone. And the other thing is, that you can't see it because it's under this, this bag of spare ammunition in here, but there's a raisable cheek piece on this rifle, which effectively allows you to custom that stock to you, which is, a, you pay a lot of money for that in a shotgun. Yeah. Uh, that's a great facility. Very few rifles have it, so you lift up the comb and just nicely get that in so that you've got a lovely, I mean, you should be able to, a rifle should come up like a shotgun. You should be able to lift the rifle up and it, it, your eye relief should be perfect on the scope that facility allows you to really just get that honed in so it's smack onto your own. So I mean one of the things about this scope is that I can actually without my reading glasses see those dials because they're big enough and the numbers are big enough. It's like Jack and Ori, you know, reading the big 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 letters. I can see that so I can actually make adjustments to it if I need to do. Um, and you know just just simple little things like that you know to be able to alter your you know the zoom. It's fantastic because I can actually see those numbers without putting a pair of glasses on. I'm not mechanically minded at all, never been interested, never been the slightest bit interested. So when I get in a car, I want to be able to turn it on, I want it to go somewhere, I don't want it to break down. Yeah. And in many respects, my use of rifles is exactly the same. Um, I'm not into the technical spec, I'm not interested in the technical spec. What I am interested in is, is the, is the rifle balanced? Does it feel right? Is it very accurate out of the box? Is it strong enough to withstand what I want to do? And this is one of the reasons why I tend to go for a synthetic stock. Um, and does it do the job? Um, how it actually physically works, I really don't give a flying fig about, as long as it works for me. And that's, I think, a lot of people like that. It's actually an interesting point, really, Wade, because it's, it's, it's a huge subject. There is a very fine line, um, and it's quite a balancing act to get the weight of a rifle in terms of lightness correct, because you're obviously going to, you know, like we've been done today, we're going to walk a long way. We're not driving, jumping out of the car, shooting something. We're actually carrying the rifle for two, three hours, and that could be up a big hill and, and a lot longer. Weight gives you stability when you're using it, balance and all the rest of it, and lightness for carrying. So you've got to kind of get that in between. And I, you know, this this is, you've got this, there's, there's, there's some, this is fully kitted up. You know, uh, I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea what it weighs. Um, in, in a non-technical term, it's right. It's got exactly the right balance. Yeah, it's balance. It sits on my back nicely. Um, it sits comfortably and when I've got it on the sticks and the vast majority of shots that I'm taking with the rifle are off sticks because of the environment we're in. Um, it's got to be balanced. Um, you know, the length of barrel, just everything about it is right. Um, it's, it's just comfortable to use.